Ali, you come on a donkey, we come on horses. He said, I don't need to run, so I don't need a fast animal. It is only he who needs to flee that needs a horse. Okay. Now, when you read the ayats, if you read Surah Ali Imran, a large part, almost 30% of the surah is just talking about the battle of Uhud. In particular, verse 144 and verse 145, Allah is uh, reprimanding the Muslims for fleeing from the battle. For example, in verse 144, he says, Allah now in verse 144 he says And indeed Allah will reward the grateful The shakirin In verse 145 again he says And indeed we shall reward those who are grateful Allama Taba Tabai says These are amongst the only verses of the Quran Where Allah refers to people With the adjective shakirin now this is very important. Why is it important? Especially with regards to Imam Ali alayhi salam. We know that amongst those many fled and almost all fled, Imam Ali did not flee. So when Allah says that if the Prophet were to be killed, will you run away? Whoever runs away will not harm Allah and Allah will reward those who are grateful. We know that the Shakirin here refers to Imam Ali. That is established. Now, there is a difference when Allah uses a quality as a verb and when He uses as an adjective. When Allah says, those who show patience, that is one thing. And when Allah says, the patient ones, it is another thing. When you say, those who show patience, that is used as a verb. Those individuals may have shown patience on one occasion, but it does not mean that they are patient as a quality of theirs. But when you say the patient ones, it means it is an attribute that is inseparable from them. They personify that quality. Just like when you say he who committed injustices versus you say the unjust ones. Or when you say those who worshipped idols and when you say the idol worshippers. Those who worshipped idols could have worshipped once only. But the idol worshippers are those in whom this quality is so inseparable that they personify it. That they, it is an attribute of theirs. So Allah does not say that He will reward those who showed gratitude. He says He will reward the grateful ones, the shakirin. So it is an attribute of theirs. Now, park that for a moment and then bring the issue of Isma and Tahara where people say that Imams are masoom. How can you prove that an Imam is masoom? A very simple way to prove this. Allah mentions three instances in the Quran. He quotes Iblis on what Iblis says to him when he is thrown out of Jannah, when he is thrown out of the kingdom of Allah. He promises Allah that he will mislead the children of Adam. In Surah Al-Hijr, chapter 15 of the Quran, and in Surah Sa'd, chapter 38 of the Quran, when Allah quotes Iblis, he says that when Iblis says to Allah, I will misguide all the children of Adam, he says, إِلَّا عِبَادَكَ مِنْهُمُ الْمُخْلَصِينَ Except those of your servants amongst them who are sincere. In other words, he is admitting defeat that those who are mukhlasin, I have no access to them. But in the third quotation, which is in Surah Al-A'raf, when Iblis says to Allah that I will misguide all of them, he says, "Wala tajidu aktharahum shakirin," and you will not find most of them to be shakirin. So now when you bring these three ayats together, you begin to see that the mukhlasin are the same as the shakirin. Because there Iblis said, I will not have access to the mukhlasin. Here he says to Allah, they will all be ungrateful to you, except for the shakirin. You will not find most of them to be shakirin. So those who are mukhlasin are those who are shakirin. The mukhlasin and the shakirin are those to whom shaitan has no access. And there in the ayats regarding the battle of Uhud, Allah says, soon we will reward the shakirin, both in verse 144 and 145. And the shakirin, we are told by historians, are those who did not flee from the battle of Uhud, which was Amir al-Mu'mineen alayhi salam. So when you string these all together, you begin to see that he is indeed the individual who is from the mukhlasin. He is indeed the individual to whom Allah is referring when he talks of the shakirin. And therefore he is indeed the individual who is purified from sin, from whom shaitan has no access and who has completely, completely surrendered himself 
to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Salawat ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. Now, if you can decide one more salawat ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. So we have established a base to say that if a person is an atheist, what will stop him from knowing God is his self-will, his pride, his feeling that he is independent from God. He is thinking that I do not need anyone, that I survive on my own. But for a Muslim as well, the obstacle to knowing God in the sense of the obstacle to experiencing the pleasure of the proximity of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the realization that one is completely dependent on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also stems from the same idea of self-will. It is the self-will that stops one from knowing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now just to bring this to a closure, I just want to mention one or two points here. First of all, if you look at Suratul Al-Infitar, which is chapter 82 of the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the very last verse, He says, يَوْمَ لَا تَمْلِكُ نَفْسٌ لِنَفْسٍ شَيْئًا وَالْأَمْرُ يَوْمَئِذٍ لِلَّهِ on the day when no soul will benefit any other soul. And the affairs on that day will entirely be Allah's. The command on that day will be entirely Allah's. Now, there is a beautiful narration on this regard from Imam Muhammad al-Baqir salatullahi wa salam alayhi. Allahumma wa salli ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. In which he says to Jabir bin Abdullah al-Ansari, he says, O oh Jabir, the Amr of Allah will be on the day of judgment just the way it is in this world. And this is something to think about. Allah says in the Quran, on that day, the command and the authority will be only Allah's. Imam al-Baqir is saying, his command on that day will be exactly the way it is here. What does that mean? That means that when Allah says on that day, no one shall have authority except Him, it does not mean that anyone else has authority besides Him in this world. It means that even in this world, the command is only Allah's. The authority is only His. But the difference is that in this world, that realization is not there. And that realization is not there because of this nafs, because of this ego, because of this self-will. Because of this illusion that the mind has produced and sustained, a human being comes to think that he is in control. When in fact, if that ego or that nafs was to drop, was to be dissolved, and there was no self-will, and there was complete surrender to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then it would become abundantly clear that وَالْأَمْرُ يَوْمَئِذٍ لِلَّهِ is on that day as it is today. He is in control today as well. To put this very differently, okay, and we have all experienced this in life, even though we as Shias do not believe in predestination that Allah does everything, we should not also forget that we are also not entirely free. Free will is a small window of opportunity that is given to you as a human being just enough so that you can do good and prove your worthiness for Jannah, or just enough for you to incriminate yourselves and perish the soul, but it does not give you the freedom to do everything you want as you please. We see from personal experience, you were not able to choose when you were born, you were not able to choose where you were born, you were not able to choose your family, you were not able to choose, you can't even choose your neighbors, right? You are not able to choose a lot of things in life. You cannot choose how much you will eat, how much you will drink, how long you will live, where you will die, where you will be buried, that is all outside your control. So how much control do you have, O Insan? You see, it is like an example of, you know, there was a man who had a habit of saying all the time, may the will of Allah be done. May the will of Allah be done. And this used to annoy Mullah Nasruddin to no end. It used to really irritate him because the man was always saying, may the will of Allah be done. So one day when the man said, may the will of Allah be done, Mullah Nasruddin said to him, with all due respect, in any case, it is always the will of Allah that is being done. So the man said, how so Mullah? Can you prove your statement? He said, well, it's very simple. If it wasn't always the will of Allah being done, then once in a while my will would have been done. The fact that my will is never done, whatever I want I never get, that itself should prove that it is only the will of Allah that is being done. Now when Allah says, وَلَا تَقُولُوا لِشَيْءٍ إِنِّي فَاعِلٌ ذَلِكَ غَدًا إِلَّا أَنْ يَشَاءَ اللَّهِ 
and do not say about anything, I will do this tomorrow.